Hello everybody and welcome to part 12 of the book of Jubilee or the epic of Jubilee rather. This will be the final reading of the book of Jubilee. We're going to be get going through a lot today. Chapter 43 all the way to the last chapter of chapter 50. Now just a refresher, when we left our characters behind last week, Joseph had been promoted to viceroy of Pharaoh's nation. He was second in command of all of Egypt. Now again, if this is your first time joining us on this channel, especially for the reading of the Book of Jubilee, I would highly suggest going back and listening to part one first. You can find the playlist with all the previous parts of the Book of Jubilee in the Dark Outpost playlist, which is in the description box below. You'll also find playlists for other banned books from the Bible that we've already covered on this channel. Again, for those who are new to the channel, first of all, welcome, welcome, welcome. Second of all, we go through the, these books on David Zublik's Dark Outpost on Tuesdays live from 1 to 3 p.m. And then we do a recap on Wednesday on my channel. So if you want to join us on Tuesdays and do it live where you can call into the show, um, please follow that link in the description box as well to get to David's platform. All right, once again, so we're at chapter 43 in the book of Jubilee where we left Joseph as the viceroy of Pharaoh's nation. And he got this position because he is able to read dreams. And he was accurate with Pharaoh's dreams. And so now, now Pharaoh has entrusted him as the most second powerful man in the whole of Egypt. Now, previously to that, Joseph had been sold to the Ishmaelites as a, basically as a slave by his brothers. His brothers, including him, are the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel, again, is Jacob. That's his, like, godly name is Israel. And so his sons formed a nation. Now, on Friday, I'm going to go into a deeper dive over Joseph and especially some of the remains that have been found in Egypt regarding Joseph's story. So if that's something you're interested in, we will be doing a deep dive into that on Friday. All right, so there was a famine in Egypt as well as the Middle East, and so Joseph's brothers ended up taking a trip down into Egypt from Canaan, about 400 miles away, to try to find food. When they get to Egypt, they run across their brother Joseph. It's been about 20 years. They don't recognize him, and so Joseph takes a hold of one of his brothers, Simeon, and tells his other brothers to go back to Jacob to get Benjamin, the youngest son. Now, Joseph and Benjamin are both the sons of Rachel. So Jacob, their father, had many wives, Leah, Rachel, and two of the handmaidens. So some of the brothers are half-brothers, where Joseph and Benjamin are the two sons of Jacob's favorite wife, Rachel. At this point, the brothers don't recognize Joseph. They don't know that that's their brother. Now, Joseph's going to play a little trick on his brothers to see if they're still vengeful or spiteful or to see if they've learned to have love in their heart. And so he packs their bags up full of food and puts their money back in their bags. And he puts one of his prize cups into Benjamin's bag, the youngest, who again is also his full brother, just to see if what his brothers will do when Benjamin is accused of stealing. I hope that makes sense. Again, you can find this story in the book of Genesis as well, but this book of Jubilee goes into a little bit more detail than the book of Genesis. All right, so chapter 43, Joseph finally tests his brethren and then makes himself known to them. And he did as Joseph had told him. So Joseph's servants are doing as Joseph, their master, has commanded and filled all their sacks for them with food and put their money in their sacks and put the cup in Benjamin's sack. And early in the morning they departed and it came to pass that when they had gone from thence, Joseph said unto the steward of his house, pursue them, run and seize them. For good ye have requited me with evil. You have stolen from me the silver cup out of which my Lord drinks and bring back to me their youngest brother and fetch him quickly before I go forth to my seat of judgment. 
And he ran after them and said unto them according to these words. And they said unto him, God forbid that thy servant should do this thing and steal from thy house of thy Lord any utensils. And the money also which we found in our sacks the first time we thy servants brought back from the land of Canaan. How then should we steal any utensil? Behold, here are we in our sacks. Search, and whenever thou findest the cup in the sack of any man amongst us, let him be slain, and we and our asses will serve thy Lord. So the brothers are like, we didn't take anything. Go ahead and search our, back, our bags. There's nothing there. And he said unto them, Not so. The man with whom I find him only shall I take as a servant, and ye will, will return in peace unto your house. So they're saying, We're not going to kill you if you stole, and not all of you are going to have to come back. But the person who stole is now going to be a servant for payment for this thing that he has stolen. And as he was searching in their vessels, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest, it was found in Benjamin's sack, right where Joseph told them to put the cup. And they rent their garments and laid in their asses and returned to the city and came to the house of Joseph. And they all bowed themselves on their faces to the ground before him. And Joseph said unto them, Ye have done evil. And they said, What shall we say and how shall we defend ourselves? Our Lord hath discovered the transgression of his servants. Behold, we are the servants of our Lord and our asses also. And Joseph said unto them, I too fear the Lord. As for you, go ye to your homes and let your brother be my servant, for ye have done evil. Know ye not that a man delighteth in this cup as I with this cup? And yet ye have stolen it from me. And Judas said, O oh my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ear. Two brothers did thy servant's mother bear to our father. One went away and was lost, lost and hath not been found, and he alone is left of his mother. Thy servant our father loveth him, and his life also is bound up in the life of this lad. So Judah is now begging Joseph, saying, Listen, our dad's wife had two sons, Joseph, whom he's speaking to, which he doesn't realize he's speaking to, and Benjamin. And Joseph is gone. And all he has is Benjamin now. That was his child with Rachel. And if he is taken too, it's going to kill our father. And it will come to pass when we go to thy servant, our father, and the lad is not with us, that he will die. And we shall bring down our father with sorrow unto death. Now rather let me thy servant abide instead of the boy as a bondsman unto my Lord, and let the lad go with his brethren. For I became surety for him at the hand of thy servant our father, and if I do not bring him back, thy servant will bear the blame to our father forever. And Joseph saw that they were all accorded in goodness, one with another, and he could not reframe himself, and he told them that he was Joseph. So he sees that their heart has changed, he's happy, his little trick worked and he's emotional now and he reveals to them that he is actually Joseph, their long lost brother. And he conversed with them in Hebrew tongue and fell on their necks and wept. And they knew him not and they began to weep. And he said unto them, Weep not over me, but hasten and bring my father to me. And ye see that it is my mouth that speaketh in the eyes of my brother Benjamin C. For behold, this is the second year of the famine, and there are still five years without harvest or fruit of tree or plowing. Come down quickly ye and your household, so that ye perish not through the famine, and do not be grieved for your possessions. For the Lord sent me before you to set things in order, that many people might live. And so Joseph basically is seeing that what his brothers did to him, the bad things they did to him, God actually had a purpose for that. Like they were following God's plan and doing that because it allowed Joseph to fulfill his dharma so that he could help other people. And tell my father that I am still alive, and ye behold, ye see that the Lord hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and rule over his house and over all the land of Egypt. And tell my father of all my glory, and all the riches and glory that the Lord hath given me. And by the command of the mouth of Pharaoh, he gave them chariots and provisions for the way, and he gave them all many colored raiment and silver. And to their father he sent raiment and silver and ten asses, which carried corn. And he sent them away. And they went up and told their father that Joseph was alive and was measuring out corn to all the nations of the earth and that he was ruler over all the land of Egypt. And their father did not believe it, for he was beside himself in the mind. 
But when he saw the wagons with Joseph had sent, the life of his spirit revived. And he said, it is enough for me if Joseph liveth. I will go down and see him before I die. And so that ends chapter 43. We're coming now into chapter 44. Jacob celebrated the feast of first fruits and journeys to Egypt. List of his descendants. And Israel took his journey from Haran, from the house on the new moon on the third month. And he went the way of the well of the oath, and he offered a sacrifice to the God of his father Isaac on the seventh of this month. And Jacob remembered the dream that he had seen at Bethel, and he feared to go down into Egypt. And while he was thinking of sending word to Joseph to come to him that he would not go down, he remained there seven days. If perchance he should see a vision as to whether he should remain or go down. And he celebrated the harvest festival, the first fruits, with old grain. For in all the land there was not a handful of seed in the land, for the famine was all over the beast and the cattle and the birds and also over man. And on the sixteenth the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, Jacob, Jacob, he said, here I am. And he said unto him, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham and Isaac. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I shall go down with thee, and I shall bring thee up again in this land, wilt thou be buried. And Joseph will put his hands upon thy eyes. Fear not. Go down into Egypt. And his sons rose up, and his sons' sons, and they placed their father and their possessions upon wagons. And Israel rose up from the well of the oath on the sixteenth of this third month, and he went to the land of Egypt. And Israel sent Judah before him to his son Joseph to examine the land of Goshem, for Joseph had told his brothers that they should come and dwell there, that they might be near him. And this was the goodliest land in the land of Egypt, near to him for all of them and also for the cattle. And these are the names of the sons of Jacob who went into Egypt with Jacob their father, Reuben, the firstborn of Israel. And these are the names of his son, Enoch, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi five. Simeon and his sons, these are the names of his sons, Jemuel and Jemen, Ohad, and Zakshin, and Zohar, and Saul, the son of Zephatite, women seven. Levi and his sons, and these are the names of their sons, Gershon, and Kohath, and Marier, four. Judah and his sons, these are the names of his sons, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah, four. Ishchar and his sons, and these are the names of his son, Tola, Pu, Jashab, and Shimram, five. Zeblon and his sons, and these are the names of his sons, Sarid and Elon and Jalil, four. And these are the sons of Jacob and their sons, whom Leah bore to Jacob in Mesopotamia, six, and their one sister, Dina, and all the souls of the sons of Leah and their sons, who went with Jacob their father into Egypt, twenty-nine, and Jacob their father being with them, they were thirty. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, the wife of Jacob, whom she bore unto Jacob, Gad and Asher. And these are the names of their sons who went into Egypt, the sons of Gad, Ziphion and Hagi, and Sunni and Esbon, and Ari, and Ariel, and Ariad, eight. And the sons of Asher, Imna, and Ishiva, and Barier, and Sarah, their one sister, six. And all the souls were fourteen, and, those, and all those of Leah were forty-four. And the sons of Rachel, the wife of Jacob, Joseph and Benjamin. And they are born to Joseph in Egypt before his father came into Egypt, those whom Asenath, daughter of Pontifar, priest of Elopasus, bare unto him, Mansiah and Ephraim, three. And the sons of Benjamin, Belar, Becher, Ashbel, Gera, Namim, Ahai, Rosh, Mupin, Hupin, and Ard, eleven. And the souls of Rachel were fourteen. And the sons of Bilhan, the handmaid of Rachel, the wife of Jacob, who bare to Jacob were Dan and Naphtali. And these are the names of their sons who went into Egypt. And the sons of Dan were Hushim and Simon and Ashti and Ijaka and Solomon six. And they died the year in which they entered Egypt. And there was left of Dan Hushim alone. And these are the sons of Naphtali. 
Zazil and Guni and Zezer and Shalom and Ive. And Ive was born after the years of famine died in Egypt. And all the souls of Rachel were 26. And all the souls of Jacob which went into Egypt were 70 souls. These are his children and his children's children. And all 70, but five died in Egypt before Joseph and had no children. And in the land of Canaan, two sons of Judah died, Er and Onad, and they had no children. And the children of Israel buried those who perished, and they were reckoned among 70 Gentile nations. So this brings us to chapter 45. Joseph receives Jacob. The land of Egypt is acquired for Pharaoh, Jacob's death, and the burial. And Israel went into the country of Egypt, into the land of Goshen, on the new moon of the fourth month in the second year of the third week of the 45th Jubilee. And Joseph went to meet his father Jacob to the land of Goshen, and he fell on his father's neck and wept. And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thee. And now may the Lord God of Israel be blessed, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, who hath not withheld his mercy and his grace from his servant Jacob. It is enough for me that I have seen thy face whilst I am yet alive. Ye true is the vision which I saw at Bethel. Blessed be the Lord my God, for ever and ever blessed be his name. And Joseph and his brothers ate bread before their father, and drank wine. And Jacob rejoiced with exceedingly great joy, because he saw Joseph eating with his brothers and drinking before them. And he blessed the Creator of all things, who had preserved him, and preserved for him his twelve sons. And Joseph had given to his father and to his brothers as a gift the right of dwelling in the land of Goshen and in Ramses and all the region round about, which he ruled over before Pharaoh. And Israel and his sons dwelt in the land of Goshen, the best part of the land of Egypt, and Israel was 130 years old when he came into Egypt. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and also their possessions with bread as much as sufficed them for seven years the famine. And the land of Egypt suffered by reason of the famine, and Joseph acquired all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh in return for food. And he got possession of the people and their cattle and everything for Pharaoh. And the years of the famine were accomplished. And Joseph gave to the people in the land seed and food that they might sow the land in the eighth year, for the river had overflowed all the land of Egypt. For in the seven years of the famine it had not overflowed and had been irrigated only a few places on the banks of the river, but now it overflowed and the Egyptians sowed the land and bore much corn that year. And this was the first year of the fourth week of the 45th Jubilee. And Joseph took the corn of the harvest, the fifth part, for the king, and left four parts for, for them for food and for seed. And Joseph made it an ordinance for the land until this day. And Israel lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years. And all the days which he lived there, three jubilees, one hundred forty-seven years, he died the fourth year of the fifth week of the forty-fifth jubilee. And Israel blessed his sons before he died and told them everything that would fall them in the land of Egypt. And he made known to them what would come upon them in the last days and blessed them and gave to Joseph two portions in the land. And he slept with his fathers and he was buried in the double cave in the land of Canaan near Abraham his father in the grave which he dug for himself in the double caves in the land of Hebron. And he gave all his books and books of his father to Levi his son, that he might preserve them and renew them for his children unto this day. Now what's interesting in my studies is that Jacob was actually given um, the burial of Pharaoh. And a lot of people believe he might have actually been buried in the Valley of the Kings. But in the Book of Jubilee, he was brought back into the Middle East, back into the land of Canaan. So when I do my deep dive, that might be something very interesting to look into. So this is going to bring us to chapter 46, the death of Joseph, the bones of Jacob's son, except Joseph, interred at Hebron, the oppression of Israel by Egypt. 
And it came to pass that after Jacob died, the children of Israel multiplied in the land of Egypt, and they became a great nation. And they were of one accord in heart, so that brother loved brother, and every man helped his brother. And they increased abundantly and multiplied exceedingly ten weeks of years, all the days of the life of Joseph. And there was no Satan, nor any evil, all the days of the life of Joseph, which he lived after his father Jacob. For all the Egyptians honored the children of Israel all the days of the life of Joseph. And Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old. Seventeen years he lived in the land of Canaan. Ten years he was a servant, and three years in prison. Eighty years he was under the king, ruling the land of Egypt." And he died and all his brethren and all that generation. And he commanded the children of Israel before he died that they should carry his bones with them when they went forth from the land of Egypt. And he made them swear regarding his bones, for he knew that the Egyptians would not again bring forth and bury him in the land of Canaan. For Machamaron, king of Canaan, while dwelling in the land of Assyria, fought in the valley with the king of Egypt and slew him there and pursued after the Egyptians to the gates of Irmon. But he was not able to enter for another, a new king, had become the king of Egypt, and he was stronger than he, and he returned to the land of Canaan, and the gates of Egypt were closed, and none went out, and none came into Egypt. And Joseph died in the 46th Jubilee, in the sixth week, in the second year, and they buried him in the land of Egypt, and his brethren died after him. And the king of Egypt went forth to war with the king of Canaan in the 47th Jubilee in the second week in the second year. The children of Israel brought forth all the bones of the children of Jacob, save the bones of Joseph, and they buried them in the field of the double cave in the mountain. And most of them returned to Egypt, but a few of them remained in the mountains of Hebron, and Amron, their father, remained with them. And the king of Canaan was victorious over the king of Egypt, and he closed the gates of Egypt. And he devised an evil device against the children of Israel of afflicting them. And he said unto the people of Egypt, Behold, the people of the children of Israel have increased and multiplied more than we. Come and let us deal wisely with them before they become too many. And let us afflict them with slavery before war came upon us and before they too fight against us. Else they will join themselves unto our enemies and get them up out of our land, for their hearts and faces are towards the land of Canaan. And he set over them taskmasters to afflict them with slavery. And they built strong cities for Pharaoh, Piton, and Ramses. And they built all walls and all the fortification which had fallen in the cities." And they made them serve with rigor, and the more they dwelt evilly with them, the more they increased and multiplied. And the people of Egypt abandoned the children of Israel. This brings us now to chapter 47, the birth and early years of Moses. And in the seventh week, and the seventh year, in the 47th Jubilee, thy father went forth from the land of Canaan, and thou was born in the fourth week, in the sixth year thereof, in the 48th Jubilee. This was a time of tribulation on the children of Israel. And Pharaoh, king of Is Egypt, issued a command regarding them that they should cast all their male children which were born into the river. And they cast them in for seven months until the day that thou wast born. And thy mother hid thee for three months, and they told regarding her. And she made an ark for thee, and covered it with a pitch and asphalt and placed it in the flags on the bank of the river, and she placed thee in it seven days. And thy mother came by night and suckled thee, and by day Miriam thy sister guarded thee from the birds. And in those days Tharmuth the daughter of Pharaoh came to bathe in the river, and she heard thy crying voice, and she told her maidens to bring thee forth, and they brought thee unto her. And she took thee out of the ark, and she had compassion on thee. And thy sister said unto her, Shall I go and call unto thee one of the Hebrew women to nurse and suckle this babe for thee? And she said, Go. And she went and called thy mother, Joshbed, and she gave her wages, and she nursed thee. And afterwards, when thou wast grown up, they brought thee unto the daughter of Pharaoh, and thou didst become her son. And Amron thy father taught thee writing, and after thou hadst complete three weeks, they brought thee into the royal court. And thou wast three weeks of years at court until the time when thou didst go from the royal court and didst see an Egyptian smiting thy friend, who was of the children of Israel. And thou didst slay him and hide him in the sand. 
And on the second day thou didst find two children of Israel striving together, and thou didst say to him, Who was doing the wrong? Who dost thou smite thy brother? And he was angry and indignant, and said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Thinkest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian yesterday? And thou didst fear and flee on account of these words? So I think most of us all know the story of Moses, where he was born. He is Hebrew, and he was born to a woman who obviously was of the tribes of Israel and was taken in by the Pharaoh's daughter and raised in the court of the Pharaoh. And then he finds out that he's actually not Egyptian. She, he's He's Hebrew. He's Jewish. So here we go into chapter 48, the flight of Moses to the Exodus. So as you know from the canonized Bible, Genesis, Exodus are the first two books. So we can kind of see the, the breaching over from Genesis to Exodus in the book of Jubilees. And in the sixth year of the third week of the 49th Jubilee, thou didst depart and dwell in the land of Midian, five weeks and one year, and thou didst return into Egypt in the second week, in the second year, in the 50th Jubilee. And thou thyself knowest what he spake unto thee on Mount Sinai, and what Prince Mastima desired to do with thee when thou wast returning into Egypt on the way when thou didst meet him at the lodging place. Now Prince Mastima, again, is Satan. He did not with all his power seek to slay thee and deliver the Egyptians out of thy hand when he saw that thou was sent to execute judgment and vengeance on the Egyptians. And I delivered thee out of his hand, and thou didst perform the signs of wonders which thou wast sent to perform in, in Egypt against Pharaoh and against all his house and against his servants and his people. And the Lord executed a great vengeance on them for Israel's sake and smote them through the plagues of blood and frog, lice and dog flies, and malignant boils breaking forth in blains, and their cattle by death and by, by hailstones. Thereby he destroyed everything that grew from them, and by locust, which devoured the residue which had been left by the hail, and by the darkness, and by the death of the firstborn of men and animals. And on all their idols the Lord took vengeance and burned them with fire." And everything was sent through thy hand, that thou shouldest declare these things before they were done. And thou didst speak with the king of Egypt before all his servants and before his people. And everything took place according to thy words. Ten great and terrible judgments came to the land of Egypt, that thou mightest execute vengeance on it for Israel. And the Lord did everything for Israel's sake, and according to his covenant, which he had ordained with Abraham, that he would take vengeance on them as they had brought them by force into bondage. And the prince of Mestima stood up against thee and sought to cast thee into, ha into the hands of Pharaoh, and he helped the Egyptian sorcerers, and they stood up and wrought before thee. These evils indeed we permitted them to work, but the remedies we did not allow to be wrought by their hands." And the Lord smote them with malignant ulcers, and they were not able to stand, for we destroyed them so that they could not perform a single sign. And notwithstanding all these signs and wonders, the prince of the Mestima was not put to shame, because he took courage and cried to the Egyptians to pursue after thee with all the powers of the Egyptians, with thy chariots and thy horses, and with all the host of peoples of Egypt." And I stood between the Egyptians and Israel, and we delivered Israel out of his hands and out of the hands of his people, and the Lord brought them through the midst of the sea as if it were dry land. So again, the parting of the Red Sea. And all the people whom he brought to pursue after Israel, the Lord our God, cast them into the midst of the sea, into the depths of the abyss, beneath the children of Israel, even as the people of Egypt had cast their children into the river. He took vengeance on one million of them. And 1,000 strong and energetic men were destroyed on account of one suckling of the child of thy which they had thrown into the river. And on the 14th day, and on the 15th, and 16th, and on the 17th, and on the 18th, the prince of Messima was bound and imprisoned beneath the children of Israel that he might not accuse them. And on the 19th we let them loose that they might help the Egyptians and pursue the children of Israel. 
And he hardened their hearts and made them stubborn. And the device was devised by the Lord our God that he might smite the Egyptians and cast them into the sea. So God is using, he had the devil bound up for a while, but then he let him go because he knew that the devil was going to end up forcing the Pharaoh and his guys to like go after the Israelites. And that was kind of God's plan because then he was going to be able to drown him out with the Red Sea. Very clever. And on the 14th, we bound him so that he might not accuse the children of Israel on the day when they asked the Egyptians for vessels and garments and vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of bronze in order to despoil the Egyptians in returning for the bondage which they had forced them to serve. And we did not lead forth the children of Israel from Egypt empty handed. This brings us to chapter 49, regulations regarding the Passover. So we're kind of coming back up to the present time of this story, because remember the present time is Moses on Mount Sinai, talking to God, getting the Ten Commandments, and getting the story straight as to where they came from, the children of Israel, that they had been in Egypt for such a long time, and their whole faith had been diluted by these bad Egyptians, which we know at first there were not bad Egyptians, but then they turned into bad Egyptians, so they're kind of getting the record straight now. All right. Remember the commandment which the Lord commanded thee concerning the Passover, that thou shouldest celebrate it in the seasons on the fourteenth of the first month, that thou shouldest kill it, it before it is evening, and that should eat it by night on the evening of the fifteenth of the time of the setting sun. For on this night, the beginning of the festival and the beginning of the joy, ye were eating the Passover in Egypt, when all the powers of Mestima had been let loose to slay all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the captive maidservant in the mill and to the cattle. And in this sign which the Lord gave them, into every house, on the lintels of which they saw the blood of the land of the first year, into that house, they should not enter to slay, but should pass by it, that all those should be saved that were in the house, because the sign of the blood was on its lintels. So again, this is when they put the blood on the door, so that the angel of death would pass over the um, Israelites' houses. Okay, which is the Passover, the passing over of the houses, which is interesting because Passover was what Jesus was celebrating right before he was arrested, before his execution. And when Constantine became the emperor of the Roman Empire and held the Council of Nicaea, he outlawed Christians from celebrating the Passover, which is very interesting because Christianity is supposed to be Judaism 2.0. So this seems like a holiday that we should be celebrating, but we know that Constantine was a con man. He was not actually Christian, so it is what it is. So verse 4, And the powers of the Lord did everything according as the Lord commanded them, and they passed by all the children of Israel, and the plague came not upon them to destroy from amongst them any soul, either of cattle or man or dog. And the plague was very grievous in Egypt, and there was no house in Egypt where there was not one dead and weeping and lamination. And all of Israel was eating the flesh of the Paschal lamb and drinking wine, and was louding and blessing and giving thanks to the Lord God of their fathers, and was ready to go forth under the yoke of Egypt and from the evil bondage. And remember thou this day all the days of thy life, and observe it from year to year all the days of thy life, once a year on its day according to the law thereof, and do not adjourn it from day to day or from month to month. For it is an eternal ordinance, and engraven on the heavenly tables regarding all the children of Israel, that they should observe it every year on its day once a year throughout all their generations, and there is no limit of days, for it is ordained forever. So we should be celebrating Passover. Interesting, right? It is ordained forever. And the man who is free of uncleanliness and doth not come to observe it on occasion of its day, so as to bring an acceptable offering before the Lord, and to eat and to drink before the Lord on the day of its festival, that the man who is clean and close at hand will be cut off. Because he offered not the oblation of the Lord in its appointed seasons, he will take the guilt upon himself. Let the children of Israel come and observe the Passover on the day of its fixed time, on the fourteenth day of the first month, between the evenings, from the third part of the day to the third part of the night, for the two portions of the day are given to the light and the third part to the evening. So you notice there it says the fourteenth day of the first month. Well, we talked about many, many, many episodes ago when we were speaking about Easter and the origins of Easter. 
The beginning of the new year should be the spring time, according to the Bible. January 1, as we see it as our new year, is a satanic holiday that worships the god Jan Janu. Anyway, I have a whole whole video on that. I'll try to find it and put it in the description box for you guys. So we see again it reiterating here in verse 10 of chapter 49 that the springtime around Easter, around that equinox that happens there is actually the beginning of the new year, not the dead of winter. This that which the Lord commanded me and thou shouldest observe it in between the evenings. And it is not permissible to slay it during any period of light, but during the period of bordering on evening, and let them eat it at the time of evening until the third part of the night. And whatever is left over, all of its flesh from the third part of the night and onwards, let them burn it with fire. And they shall not cook it with water, nor shall they eat it raw, but roast on the fire, and they shall eat it with diligence. Its head with the inwards thereof, and its feet they shall roast with fire, and not break any bone thereof. For the children of Israel no bone shall be crushed. For this reason the Lord commanded the children of Israel to observe the Passover on the day of the fixed time, and they shall not break a bone thereof, for it is a festival day, and a day commanded. And there may be no passing over from day to day and month to month, but only of the day of its festival let it be observed. And do thou command the children of Israel to observe the Passover throughout their days every year, once a year, on the day of its fixed time. And it will come from a memorial well-pleasing before the Lord, and no plague will come upon them to slay or to smite. In that year in which they celebrate the Passover in its season in every respect, according to his command. And they shall not eat it outside of the sanctuary of the Lord, but before the sanctuary of the Lord. And all the people of the congregation of Israel shall celebrate it in the appointed season. And every man who hath come up its day shall eat in the sanctuary of your God before the Lord from twenty years old and upward. For thus it is written and ordained that they should eat it with the sanctuary of the Lord. And when the children of Israel come into the land which they are to possess, into the land of Canaan, and set up the, tab and set up the tabernacle of the Lord in the midst of the land, and one of their tribes unto the sanctuary of the Lord hath been built in the land, let them come and celebrate the Passover in the midst of the tabernacle of the Lord, and let them slay it before the Lord from year to year. And in the days when the house hath been built in the name of the Lord, in the land of their inheritance, they shall go there and slay the Passover in the evening at sunset at the third part of the day. And they will offer its blood on the threshold of the altar and shall place its fat on the fire which upon the altar. And they shall eat its flesh roasted with fire in the court of the house which hath been sanctified in the name of the Lord. And they may not celebrate Passover in their cities, nor in any place save before the tabernacle of the Lord, or before his house where his name hath dwelt, and they will not go astray from the Lord. And do thou, Moses, command the children of Israel to observe the ordinance of the Passover, as it was commanded unto thee, declare that thou until them every year, in the days of its day, in the festivals of the unleavened bread, that they should eat unleavened bread seven days, and that they should observe its festivals, and that they bring an oblation every day during those seven days of joy before the Lord on the altar of your God. For ye celebrate this festival with haste, when ye went forth from Egypt, till ye entered into the wilderness of Shur, for on the shore of the sea ye completed it. This brings us into the laws regarding the Jubilees and the Sabbath. 1. And after this law I made known to thee the days of the Sabbath in the desert, which is between Elim and Sinai. 2. And I told thee of the, and I told thee of the Sabbaths of the land on Mount Sinai, and I told thee of the Jubilee years in the Sabbaths of the year, but the year thereof have I not told thee till ye enter the land which ye are to possess. And the land will also keep its Sabbaths while they dwell upon it, and they will know the Jubilee year. Wherefore I have ordained for thee the three weeks and the years, and the Jubilees, there are forty-nine Jubilees from the days of Adam until this day, and one week and two years, and there are yet forty years to come, for learning the commandments of the Lord until they pass over the land of Canaan, crossing the Jordan to the west. 
and the jubilees will pass by until Israel is cleansed from the guilt of fornication and an uncleanliness and pollution and sin and error and dwelleth with confidence in all the land and there will be no more Satan or any evil one and the land will be clean from that time evermore. And behold the commandment regarding the Sabbath. I have written them down for thee and all the judgments of its laws. Six days wilt thou labor, but on the seventh day it is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it ye shall do no manu manner of work, ye and your sons and your men servants and your maid servants and all your cattle, and the journeying also who is with you. And the man that doeth any work on it shall die, whoever discreeteth that day, whoever lieth with his wife, or whoever saith he will do something on it, and he will set out on a journey thereon in regard to any buying or selling, and whoever draweth water thereon, which he had not prepared for himself on the sixth day, and whoever taken up any burden to carry it out of his tent or out of his house shall die. So basically the Sabbath you should not do anything, and we know that in Jewish Orthodoxy, they don't do anything. They don't even, I don't, from what I understand, they don't even have their electricity turned on. So they still take that very, very seriously. We saw in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve that Jesus kind of got a little bit more laid back about the Sabbath. Um, he also said, stop eating lambs on Passover because I am now the sacrificial lamb. And in Jesus' point of view, According to the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, we should not actually be eating any meat whatsoever or sacrificing animals because according to the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, the animals are our brother and sisters and breathe the same air that we breathe. So we see that you know, Jesus kept telling in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, he kept telling the rabbis that a greater one than Moses was here to kind of correct some of these things. So that's interesting that we're seeing the backstory, the history of what we just previously read in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, which Jesus saying, now we're going to change this a little bit. All right, verse 9. And ye shall do no work whatsoever on the Sabbath day, save that ye have prepared for yourself on the six days, so as to eat and drink and rest, and keep the Sabbath from work on all that day and bless the Lord your God who has given you a day of a festival and a holy day and a day of the holy kingdom for all of Israel is this day amongst their days forever. For great is the honor which the Lord hath given to Israel that they should not eat and drink and be satisfied on this festival day and rest thereon from all labor which belongeth to the labor of the children of men save burning frankincense and bringing oblations and sacrifices before the Lord for the days and for Sabbaths. This work alone shall be done on the Sabbath days in the sanctuary of the Lord your God that they may atone for Israel with sacrifice continually from day to day for a memorial well pleasing before the Lord and that he may receive them always from day to day according as thou hast commanded. And every man who doeth any work thereon, or goeth on a journey, or t tilleth his farm, whether in his house or any other place, and whoever lighteth a fire, or rideth on any beast, or traveleth by ship on sea, and whoever shrinketh or killeth anything, or slaughtereth a beast or a bird, whoever catcheth an animal, or a bird or a fish, or whoever fasteth or maketh war on the Sabbath, the man who doeth any of these things on the Sabbath shall die, so that the children of Israel shall observe the Sabbath according to the commandments regarding the Sabbath of the land, as it is written in the tables which he gave into my hands, and I should write out for thee the laws of the seasons, and the seasons according to their divisions of their days. Here is completed the account of the divisions of days. So again with the Sabbath day, we're looking at the seventh day being also a Jubilee day. Every 49 days, also divided by seven, we have a day of, of rest, of, of rejuvenation. We know that within the Jubilee, that every 49 years, the 50th year, that was a day to let go of all your debts, to cleanse everything, which we've stopped doing, which is why now we're about to go into the age of Jubilee with Nasara, where we're going to have all of our debts forgiven. Um, and so that's interesting. And that completes the book of Jubilee, guys. The next book we're going to go into is the, um, the Apocalypse of Abraham, which I have not read yet. I now have the book in hand, so I will start my research on the backstory of the Apocalypse of Abraham, and next week we'll get diving into that banned book. So again, every Wednesday, for those who are new to the channel, we are going through 
as many of the banned or heretical books of the Bible that we can find, because now we know they're not banned or heretical, they're just censored. Because that's what the Luciferian people like to do. They like to censor what we know. And you would have to be living under a rock at this point if you didn't realize that the organization of the church is run by this dark cabal of Luciferians. That's just that's just rather unfortunate if people have not figured that out at this point. That, you know, the devil is a lot of things. Stupid ain't one of them. So, of course, he's going to infiltrate the church first. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Still my favorite band book so far is, is still The Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Leave me your thoughts down in the comment section below. Which one of the band books has been your favorite gospel so far? I'm looking forward to cracking into a new one next week with you guys. I hope you're all having a fantastic week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.